Okay, shall we start? <laughs> okay, this is a Professor Lee's second lecture. Please welcome. Uh, uh, okay, so, okay, can you hear me? Okay. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> did you understand well what we learned yesterday? So, I mean, during the yesterday lecture, there were many um, questions about the stochastic calculus. So I think um, uh, it, it, it will take some time. So if you, so, I mean, if you see this uh, stochastic calculus first, I think uh, it would be confusing, but I think uh, time is the best medicine. So some uh, experience or some exercise is necessary for to, to get used to this stochastic calculus. So uh, don't worry about too much. So definitely it is not difficult one. Okay, so uh, yesterday um, uh, I talked about uh, the thermodynamics for Langevin system. So uh, there we, um, I talked about the definition of work and heat and how to evaluate the path probability. So today uh, I'm going to uh, talk about, I'm starting from the thermodynamics for Markov jump process. Okay, so <clears throat> Markov jump process has a discrete state. So let's say that this is a, a discrete state from zero, one. So this is the indices for states. And this system is in contact with reservoir with temperature T. Here, um, this is the energy level, and this uh, denotes a probability for each state. Okay, so with this setup, uh, this, um, this system dynamics can be described by this master equation. Here, um, Rij uh, means the transition rate from J state to I state. So, uh, okay, so, uh, and be careful about this order of these uh, in indices. So here um, I uh, is not equal to J. And then so, um, because of this is a transition rate, so this one uh, uh, multiplied by probability uh, means that average number of jumps from J state to I state per unit time. Okay, so it means that, so this first term uh, means the influx into I state, and the second term means outflow from I state. Okay, so now this um, uh, summation uh, applies to this term and this term, so we can divide it into two parts. So let's look at this second term, then this summation only applies to this transition uh, rate, not, not this uh, the probability, because uh, this summation is only for, I mean, except for I state. So, um, so this term, uh, I mean, this term, uh, so we can say that this is a escape rate uh, from I state. So if we define the diagonal term of this uh, uh, transition matrix as uh, minus of this escape rate, then we can write this uh, master equation in this simple way. So here now it uh, includes uh, I index here. Okay, so uh, with this setup, then now we can define work and heat uh, for this Markov jumper process. So um, this is average energy of a system. Then now um, this one is time derivative of this average energy. Then it has two terms. So this is the first term and second term. The first term is about the energy level change and the second term is about the population number change. Okay. So I will show that this first term is power, I mean the work, I work rate. And the second term is heat, so heat rate. So I'll show this. 
Okay, so let me first do the second term. Okay, so this one. Okay, first um, consider this transition from I state to J state. And this transition, this transition is induced by heat absorption, QJI. And this QJI is equal to the energy difference of these two states. So, um, if we say that if we define a delta NJI, which means that number of jumps from I state to J state during delta T, then the total, I mean, then this value, this value is the heat absorption, uh, uh, heat absorption during delta T uh, from the transition from I state to J state. So the summation over all pairs of uh, transition, then it gives the total heat absorption per delta T. I is it clear? Yeah. Okay. So its average value uh, can be written in this way, and we can uh, we can write this average value in terms of transition rate in this way because this one this one is a uh, average number of jumps from i to j per unit time. So by multiply delta t, so this means that average number of jumps from i to j during delta t. So uh, by um, dividing delta t and taking a limit, uh, delta t goes to zero, then it means that the heat rate, right? So, um, so from this, uh, we can write in this way. So this is a heat rate. Okay, and then now uh, divided this summation into two parts. The, this is the first part and this is the second part. And if you look at this first summation, then this indices, i and j are dummy indices, right? So we can exchange i to j, j to i. So we exchange the, the dummy variables, dummy, not, uh, dummy indices in this way. Then now sum, sum, sum of this again, then we can have this equation. So from, from the equation of motion, math from the master equation, this is nothing but P dot I, P I dot. So uh, it means that heat rate uh, is given by population change. So it means that uh, the heat, I mean, in, in this uh, uh, Ma Markov jump process, heat is associated with population change. This is the meaning of uh, this uh, equality. Okay, no question? And then now let's look at the first part. So uh, now let's uh, assume that system is in state I initially. And now we change the energy level in this way. Not, this is not the transition, but the, the system is in the same state, but we just change the energy level. So uh, after delta t, energy level is changes to EIT plus delta t. So because a, because a system does not change, so uh, the, this one, the population does not change after delta t, only, only the energy level is changed. So this energy level changes is not induced by heat, but by external agent. It means that it, this energy level change is induced by uh, some providing some work. So, so the mean work for this energy level change can be evaluated in this. So this is energy level change. This is a necessary work to change this energy level times uh, population probability. Then this gives the mean work for this energy level change. So by summing over all states, index i, then we get, um, I mean, the mean work for all changes, total, total work. So uh, by um, dividing, dividing delta t and taking this 
delta t goes to zero limit. So this is a power work rate. So it, it becomes uh, e dot times p. So it, it means that work in this um, Markov jump process, work is associated with energy level change. Okay, so, so this is the first thermodynamic first law in the uh, Markov jump process in the, this um, <coughs> um, master equation system. Okay, so we, we found uh, the what is the thermodynamic first law, how to define uh, work and heat in this uh, uh, discrete uh, state jump system. And then now let's turn to the uh, how to evaluate the path of probability in this system. Okay, so um, this is one example of stochastic trajectory of this Markov jump process. So it starts from the state x0, and at time t1, it jumps from x0 to x1, and it stays at the same state, and, and at time t2, it jumps from x1 state to x2 state, and, and so on and so on, and this is the final state. The final time is tau. So this is the one stochastic trajectory. So uh, we want to evaluate path probability. So, okay, let's consider this one first. So jump probability from I state to J state during delta T uh, is given by this value because uh, RJI is a transition rate from I to J. So by multiplying delta T, it gives a jump probability. And escaping probability from I state during delta T is given by, so this term, uh, as I mentioned that this term is escaping probability. So is, uh, escaping rate. So uh, escaping rate times delta T gives the escaping probability. And I define that uh, this escaping probability as a, a diagonal element, RII, minus RII. So we can write, we can write um, escaping probability in this way by using the diagonal term of this transition matrix. And then staying probability is then uh, one minus escaping probability is a staying probability. So this is a one minus this escape, escaping probability. And because delta t is a very small number, we can approximately write by using exponential function in this way. So this is a staying probability, escaping probability, and jump probability. Okay, so now let's consider uh, this one segment. So here, for example, this segment, let's say that. So here, at, uh, it started from t n minus one, and the state, state of the system is x n minus one until time t n. And at time t n, a jump sucker from this state to this state. So uh, now I want to calculate the probability for observing this one path segment. So let, let me first um, consider the staying probability, staying probability during this time. Because for infinitesimal time, staying probability is given by this exponential factor. So the staying probability for finite time also can be written in this way by using this um, uh, the diagonal term of the transition matrix. So, the question here? No? Okay. And then, um, so, the probability for observing this one path segment is that this staying probability times jump probability. Jump, this is a jump probability. So this is the probability for observing this one path segment. And then what is the probability for observing this whole path segment, a uh, whole, whole path? Uh, and then this whole path consists of each, each path segment, here, 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 so. 
the whole path probability can be written in this way. So it started from the initial, um, initial state x0. So we need initial distribution first. And then this is a product of each segment probability because each segment, each path segment is given independently. So we can write the probability in this product, product way. So this uh, explains each segment probability. So first segment, second segment, third, fourth segment. And finally, one staying uh, situation remains. So this probability uh, is included in this um, staying probability. So in, in, in such a way, we can write uh, the path probability for this whole, whole path can be written in this way. Uh, okay, so um, is there any question here? Okay. Uh, this one? Yes, yes. Summation of Rj equal to what? Mm. Yes. Uh, yes, I mean, that's a normalization condition. But, uh, okay, so, um, uh, okay, okay, so here, uh, Okay, so if you look at this part, uh, here I um, define the escape rate uh, as a diagonal. I mean, this, tra this transition matrix uh, is defined when i is not equal to j. So here I define what is a diagonal term. Diagonal term is defined as a summation over this transition rate except i. So this, this is kind of, I mean, uh, kind of, you can think it as just a definition. So if we add, so you, you, as you said, if we move this term to the left-hand side and summation of all j, then it becomes zero. Actually, this is, a, this is called a normalization condition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So more question? Okay, so um, okay, so let me summarize uh, this second part. So uh, uh, so we um, I talked about how to define um, the work and heat uh, in this Markov jump process. So this is a thermodynamic first law. <laughs> And uh, I also talked about how to uh, calculate the path to probability in this Markov jump process. Okay, so I, I'll use this, I mean, I'll use uh, this path to probability uh, in the next lecture, lecture two. Okay, so let me go into the, I mean, uh, original lecture two. Okay, so uh, I'll, I'll skip this uh, review part. Okay, so in lecture two, uh, I'll talk about uh, two things. So the first section is about uh, how to define now entropy production in the stochastic system. So originally the thermodynamic entropy production is given by Clausius entropy production, which means that uh, the form looks like this. So heat divided by temperature. But this was originally defined in equilibrium, causal static limit, right? So, I mean, we, we have to extend this concept to any general non-equilibrium stochastic processes. It, it, this is not the trivial uh, task. So I will talk about how to define entropy production in, in, in general non-equilibrium stochastic system. In the second part, I will talk about uh, the thermodynamic second law in the stochastic system. 
it, it is important because no matter how we define entropy production uh, in the stochastic system, because of this thermal fluctuation, there is, uh, uh, there is always finite probability to observe the negative entropy production uh, due to this thermal fluctuation. But what you know from the thermodynamic second law is that entropy production should be non-negative, <laughs> but it can be negative. So what is the thermodynamic second law in small system? So actually, these fluctuation theorems an uh, answers this question. So in the second part, I will talk about uh, what is a fluctuation theorem and what is the thermodynamic second law in the small system. OK. OK, so before um, defining uh, the entropy production, let us first um, consider the quantity is called so-called irreversibility. So here, I will show you two movies. Then when you watch this movie, uh, choose which one is time forward and which one is time reverse movie. OK. It will be very easy. So first movie. And second. So which one is time forward, which one is time reverse? too difficult? Okay, so very easy. I mean, left one is a time forward and this one is time reverse. We, we, we know. I mean, uh, yes, it, it is very easy. But what about this? Can you distinguish which one is time forward, which one is time reverse? <laughs> yeah, I think, uh, oh, you, you choose it? <laughs> I mean, I think it's very, I mean, in, impossible to distinguish. So, what? So what? Sorry. So why in this case it is easy to um, distinguish, but why in this case it is difficult? Okay. So let me let me summarize in this way. So uh, this is the first movie, and this is the second movie. So in the first movie, uh, this direction is the time forward direction, and this direction is time re reverse direction, right? So, so the time forward direction process is more probable to take place compared to the time reverse process. So we call such process as irreversible process. But actually, but this, in this case, actually this time reverse process, uh, the observing this time reverse process probability is actually very, very, very much small. So in our daily lives, we cannot observe such time reverse process. So that's why we can easily distinguish which one is time forward and which one is time reverse. However, in the second case, uh, if we ignore a very small dissipation, then we can say that time forward process and time reverse process, they are equally probable to occur. So we call such process as reversible process. So the process is irreversible, then it, it is easy to distinguish which one is uh, time forward and which one is time reverse. But in, in this kind of reversible process, it is difficult. I mean, it is impossible. So inspired by this observation, now we can define the quantity uh, irreversibility. So here, let's look at this uh, schematic diagram. So uh, this is a, a, a schematic diagram of a stochastic system. So let's say that oh, there is a, suppose that there is a system, and uh, at, this is the initial time, time zero, and the uh, final time, time tau. So the, let's say that Z zero uh, denotes a initial state of a system, and this is the initial distribution. And this is a final state of a system, and this is a final distribution. And here, uh, red gamma, gamma means uh, the stochastic, the time forward stochastic trajectory from here to there. And this gamma tilde, a blue one, is a, a stochastic trajectory for time reverse path, okay? Then, then we can write, uh, this is a 
this p gamma is time forward path probability, and this p tilde is time, let's say that p tilde gamma tilde is time reverse path probability. Then uh, the irreversibility is defined as a logarithmic ratio between time forward and time reverse path probabilities. Okay, then if this time forward and time reverse process are equally probable, then this ratio becomes one. So irreversibility becomes zero. It means that irreversibility becomes zero when the process is reversible. And when the process is irreversible, then it is, it, it is not equal to zero. So you can feel that, oh, this irreversibility is a, a kind of, it feels like it, is, it would be related to entropy production because uh, entropy production equal to zero for reversible process and it is non-zero for irreversible process, right? So yes, right, so irreversibility is related to entropy production. So how, how they are related? Okay, so now let's um, then um, look at the physical meaning of this irreversibility. Let me first do the, for the overdental Langevin system. Okay, so yesterday we learned uh, how to evaluate the, uh, the time forward path probabilities. So this is a time forward path probabilities. So it started from, the initial state is started from x0, so we need this initial distribution, and this is on saga Metzler functional. Uh, so in this way, we can write uh, the path probability. And uh, here, um, for convenience, I mean, you can use any, any uh, stochastic calculus, but for, for calculation convenience, here I will choose A equal to one half, then this uh, product becomes Stratonovich, and this becomes this one. Okay, so this is a time for the path probability. And what is a time reverse path probability? So, okay, so let me first, uh, okay, let me first show, sh show you this diagram. So this one uh, shows you the, the uh, for time forward the path. Uh, position. So initially, so x denotes a time, a position of forward path, and this x tilde denotes the position uh, in the time reverse path. So uh, you see that this is the initial state, initial position of forward path, and the next step, next position, next position, and the final position of the forward path is given by x tau, right? And then let's look at now the time reverse path. So x tilde zero uh, means initial position of the time reverse path. But this one should be same as x tau. And uh, this one, the next time position in the time reverse path, so this should be same as this one. So matching this together, so the fi final position of the reverse path should be same as the initial position of the time forward path. So from this observation, uh, we can now set up this relation between x tilde and x. So x tilde t uh, should be same as x tau minus t. So these are the relation between the uh, time uh, time reverse position, and this is time forward position. Okay, so time reverse path probability can be written in this way then. So because it started from the final position of the forward path, so we, start, we should start from the final distribution of the uh, forward path. And then here, we, uh, if, if there is uh, some protocol here, T, then this protocol should be, uh, uh, should be changed into the time reverse way. And then here now, we uh, use the time and x tilde instead of x, because uh, this x tilde denotes a time reverse position. Okay, so, so that's it. And then, 
uh, here now define, let's define t prime as tau minus t, then we can write in this way. Actually, from, from this relation, by using this definition, we can write in this way. And let's look at this x tilde dot. So this is a definition of x tilde dot. And from, from this relation, we can write in this way. And by using this definition, this can be written in this way. So this is minus x dot t prime. So I will use this um, relation. So by, by using this relation, now we can change from x tilde to x. Okay, so they change it in this way. Uh, and this one is changed in this way by using this equation. And then, and, and so on and so on. And now this t prime is nothing but uh, integral variable. So it is now becomes a dummy variable. So we can change from t prime to t. So we can write uh, the path of probability in terms of forward position and forward time. So, I mean, this is just a, I mean, it is nothing but to convert uh, this fr from this x tilde notation to the x notation, okay? By, by, by using this relation. So, um, this is a time reverse path probability. So, after, after the lecture, you can, you can follow line by line by yourself. Okay, but, uh, okay, and then now let's calculate this irreversibility to understand the physical meaning of this. So, now we know this too, and then we can easily calculate this one. So, this first term comes from the ratio between this initial and final. Uh, distribution. Okay, this is it. And then this second term actually is the ratio, logarithmic ratio of this one and this one. So, okay, so the ratio between these two, to calculate this ratio, so this term are same, so they are cancelled out. And this term also same, so they also cancelled out. So only the remaining uh, part is this one and this one. So we can write this uh, logarithmic ratio of this conditional path to probability in, in this way. This one minus this one. So this is this one minus this one. So this is a result of this uh, logarithmic ratio. And then you see that uh, this square and this square, they canceled out. And this square, this square, they also canceled out. Only remaining part is the cross, cross product, right? So the remaining part is only cross product here. And this uh, product is Stratonovich. Okay, so um, now this is an equation of motion over the Langevin equation. So we can replace this external function f by using in terms of x dot and cosy in this way. So this function is replaced by this one. And then you see that this one, this is a definition of heat worked on by uh, heat bath force. So the integration of this heat segment from time zero to tau, that it gives total heat during whole process. So, so the important thing is that, so even though you cannot follow all the details, but important thing is that this conditional path of probability logarithmic ratio becomes heat divided by T, temperature. So it is a Clausius entropy. And so we can call this term as a reservoir entropy production. So um, this term is actually this is uh, actually the uh, stochastic Shannon entropy change. So b because if we say that this is a, a, Shannon, this is a, a stochastic Shannon entropy, so actually uh, this first part can be written uh, in terms of uh, this Shannon entropy difference. So if we call this Shannon entropy pro uh, difference as a system entropy change, then uh, it becomes a system entropy change and this, this becomes a reservoir entropy 
reservoir entropy production. So uh, by summing these two, we have this total entropy production. So the impo important thing is that irreversibility, which is nothing but the two probability ratio, logarithmic ratio, but it becomes a total entropy production. So this is the meaning of uh, irreversibility in the over to Langevin system. Okay, then uh, let's look at the second case, Markov jump process. Then uh, it has the same meaning. Okay, so let's look at step by step. So um, this is a, a one stochastic trajectory. So we learned how to uh, write the path probability for this stochastic trajectory. So this is it. So it, it starts from the initial distribution and this product means that pro probability of each segment product, okay? And then this one is the final staying probability. And then what is the time reverse path probability? Can you turn on <laughs> air conditioner? I, mean, I think uh, they look a little bit, <laughs> yeah, hot. Thank, thank you. So, um, so okay. Let's say that this t, t zero, t one. T, I mean, this t is a time. I mean, denotes uh, the time for uh, forward path. And let's say that t tilde is time for reverse path. So it means that t tilde and plus one uh, equal to zero, uh, but they are matching together in this way. And this t zero tilde is actually tau here. So it means that the relation between t and t tilde is given in this way. t tilde equal to tau minus t. Okay, so now let's write the time reverse path probability. So this is given by, so it should start from the final position, a uh, final state uh, of the forward path. So it started from the final uh, distribution of the forward path. And this term uh, explains that the probability for observing uh, this segment. And this uh, consecutive product means that uh, the probability for each segment, so, and the, this final staying probability explains this staying uh, situation. So we can write time reverse path probability in this way, and by using this um, relation between t tilde and t, we can change uh, t tilde to uh, t variable in this way. So if we rearrange re the terms, and then we have this relation. So of course now it becomes time reverse path the probability is also written in terms of uh, the, the time for forward path. Uh, I mean, y you don't need to uh, follow all the details, but uh, I mean, the, the point is that now we want to calculate the <coughs> logarithmic ratio of uh, these two, I mean, these two probabilities. So let's look at what happened. So this first term comes from the ratio between initial and final distribution. And this second term comes from the ratio between these two quantities. So how? So the, when we calculate the ratio of these two, this term staying probabilities are same, so they are canceled out. And the second, uh, the last staying probability also is same, so they are canceled out. So only remaining part is this transition rate and its reverse transition rate. So this rate, only this uh, rate, uh, this only this ratio uh, remains, so this is a result. So um, here, now let's assume uh, the transition rate satisfies the local detail balance condition, which means that uh, Rij and Rji satisfy this equation. 
And then because that equilibrium distribution actually is expressed by Gibbs factor, so uh, this transition uh, rate ratio uh, is given by this uh, some Boltzmann factor. So by, by using this um, condition, then we can uh, uh, calculate this explicitly. So it is given by this value. So energy difference divided by uh, temperature. And energy difference is actually, to, so I, as, as I explained that this energy difference uh, correspond to energy and heat absorption. So this is actually the heat divided by temperature. So this is the same form as Clausius entropy. So we can, so we can um, identify this second term is actually the reservoir entropy production. And this first term is also the system entropy production. So the, their sum gives a total entropy production. Okay, so uh, it tells us that uh, for both Langevin dynamics for, and Markov jumble process, this irreversibility corresponds to the entropy production, what we know already. And one comment here. So here I assume the local detail balance condition uh, for clearly show you, uh, for clearly showing you, I mean, this re uh, relation, but without this local data balance condition, we can also show the same thing. So, but here I will skip it. Okay. So the expression of local detail balance, we, uh, okay. so we, we don't have the T dependence in the RIJ. Uh, sorry again. Okay. In the local detail balance expression, okay, we have no time dependence. No time dependence of here. R I J. Yes. But in the original ah. expression, we have the T dependence. So R I J in the right side is kind of. Uh, okay. So I mean, here T dependence means that uh, it depends on time. So it has uh, some time protocol. Uh, but here it means that. Uh, the instantaneous, I mean, local detail balance. So, with uh, with a fixed with a fixed protocol, uh, then we can say that I mean, with a fi fixed protocol, we can calculate uh, the equilibrium distribution in, in that in that situation. So, when when lambda so protocol lambda is fixed, we can calculate the equilibrium distribution. So. So we can call this as a, some instantaneous uh, equilibrium distribution. So, so Rij in, in that expression is the related to the equilibrium picture? I don't know. I mean, uh, OK, so um, actually, uh, yes, R, R, R is, Rij is time dependence, but generally saying it is, it is protocol dependent. And protocol it depends on time. And of course, our JI also I mean, protocol depend, has a protocol dependence. And for a fixed protocol, we can, fi we can find, uh, I mean, uh, sorry, P equilibrium distribution for, for a fix, fixed uh, protocol. So, so we, call, we, call this, we can call this uh, instantaneous equilibrium distribution for a fixed lambda. OK. Uh, OK, so we, we can discuss it later, I think. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, instantly, the heat is absorbed or, or released from the system. This is the meaning, right? Because if you can uh, skip the time dependent of the RIJ and then relate it to the heat transfer between the system and the reservoir, which means that uh, the heat between the reservoir and the system is just in instantly transfer between each other. I, so uh, I, I, I instant equilibrium mean means that, okay, let's consider how many potential case. 
harmonic potential Okay, so let's consider this kind of a har harmonic potential. So uh, let's say that it, it is equal to, for example, a a t. Then, and at time t one, so this is the potential at time t one, right? So we can calculate the equilibrium distribution by uh, when when the stiffness becomes a t1, right? So in such a way, we can calculate the instantaneous equilibrium distribution. We, we don't care about uh, the, it has no time dependence. I mean, it can have time dependence, and we can calculate the instantaneous steady state with a fixed uh, protocol. Okay. Ah, uh, here, there, there. So here you have considered only thermal reservoir, mm -hmm. but in open system mm -hmm. there can be some other means mass exchanges there. So some chemical reservoir or that kind yes, of, of can be also there. Yes, of course. So in that second term where you have that entropy exchange rate, mm -hmm. I think, minus Q by KVT. So how that term can be modified in that open system means where there is some kind of mass exchange is there? Uh, actually, a a as, I, as I mentioned that without this uh, de local detail balance condition, we can show, it, generally we can show uh, this term satisfy this uh, Q over T. So, yeah. But um, this is for only the thermal reservoir, right? So if there is some kind of mass transfer between the system, as you said in yesterday talk about the open system, uh -huh. and so uh -huh. then there should be another time term related regarding that reservoir. Maybe that is a chemical reservoir or something like that. Mm -hmm. And how to incorporate that term into this, um, this entropy rate? means exchange, entropy exchange rate, entropy flow rate, as I can say. Mm -hmm. um, so you mean that grand canonical ensemble? Yeah, maybe for open system, mm -hmm. that's the situation, because. Yes, so yeah, right. So when there is a chemical potential, um, is there maybe any generalized term means can we generalize that thermal reservoir into any kind of reservoir that that's my question mm. okay so okay so I, I, in that case actually the uh, the uh, the pa i mean the reservoir reservoir particle number also changes so in in that case a reservoir uh, state space also changes so I think, uh, as you said, in, in such a case, we need more consid consideration. I mean, uh, uh, yes, I think uh, in that case, I'm not sure whether we can generally show, be because uh, reservoir st state space also changes when particle is changing. So in, in such a case, I think uh, we need more consideration to to derive this relation. Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, this might be a belated question, but uh, in, the, in the yesterday's lecture, we didn't know that the heat is related with probabilistic concept. And at that stage, how could we justify the identification of heat and work? So, what do you mean? So, the, the, your question is that this energy difference is how is is it related to heat? Uh, I mean that uh, without knowing that heat is related with the probability things, yeah. like in yesterday's lecture. Uh, yes. Uh, how? Can we justify the identification of heat and work 
it, it, uh, so, so I mean, within this assumption, within this assumption, I mean, this quantity is given by the trend. I mean, the, this is the energy difference between two ener energy level. So it is necessary for, I mean, making a transition. He, he, the system should observe this amount of heat from the reservoir. So that's why this transition is induced. So we can interpret this energy, energy, I mean, change, I mean, that the energy difference as a heat. It, that's what I explained in, in the, I mean, the first row of uh, uh, the Markov jumper process. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. So, more question? Okay. Mm. Oh, so um, the important thing is that for both uh, Markov jumper process and Langevin dynamics, this uh, irreversibility uh, correspond to um, total entropy production. But the thing is that this value is stochastic value. It, it means that uh, due to the fluctuation, thermal fluctuation, sometimes it can be negative. So uh, what is the meaning of a thermodynamic second law? So, this, so to, to know the meaning of a thermodynamic second law, uh, we need to see this uh, interesting property of this irreversibility. So let's look at this uh, exponential to the minus r average. And by definition, we can write this average value in this way. So e to the minus r times path to for the path to probability and sum of our all paths. And from this definition, then we can rewrite this term in this way by using the time reverse path. And some of our old path is because this is a normalization condition. So it is simply one. So it means that this average always satisfy uh, equal to one. So it means that because R is entropy production, so it means that entropy production satisfy this interesting equality and this equality is called fluctuation theorem. So, I mean, uh, thanks to Vipo, uh, in the first, first lecture of Vipo, uh, he we learned what is the Johnson's inequality. So it means that for a convex function f, so the function average is larger than the argument average of function. So by using, because exponential function is convex function, so we can use this Johnson's inequality. So here, this average is larger than this average. And because this one is smaller than one, it means that this R value should be non-negative. So it means that because R is total entropy production, so it means that average value of total entropy production should be non-negative. So this is the meaning of um, second law. So this uh, stochastic value can be negative, but its average should be non-negative. This is the meaning of uh, thermodynamic second law in a small stochastic system. Okay. Okay. So this is a fluctuation theorem. So we can we can regard this as a, some kind of a generalized second law. I mean, the second law can be derived from this equation. So this is the importance of this fluctuation theorem. But let's look at this form again. So here, I mean, because there is a, some freedom to choose of this denominator. So for example, uh, let, let's define R star. Here, I will call this R star as a dual irreversibility. And this dual irreversibility is defined as logarithmic ratio between four time four the path of probability and some kind of dual path of probability. And this dual path of probability can be different from this time 
reverse path probability. We can actually, we can choose any, any other path probability for this dual path probability. And the only constraint is that uh, it should, dual path probability should satisfy the uh, normalization condition. This is the only constraint. Then, okay. Sorry? Must be comparable with to the original probability cause. Uh, in the Markov jump system, the probability of the path is an uh, infinitesimal small, I, I think. So uh, the, the time series of jump, given its P3, is uh, uh, in the uh, kind of the, you can choose another time series, this small. Uh, it's very small. I mean, is there any uh, no very small normalization to the uh, normalization factor to the probability of pass? So your question is, when you choose this dual yes. path probability, it, sh it should be comparable to yeah. comparable to what this one? No, 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 the no. overgun. I did this one. Mm -hmm. For example, the, the, the number of jumps uh, twice as the part one, mm -hmm. then the, this uh, probability, I think, uh, is uh, uh, very smaller than the original. Yeah, okay. So, I mean, uh, this, I mean the, this dual path probability is, of course, a function of gamma, yeah. right? So, I mean, this, these two gamma should be same. So, I mean, uh, but the thing is that we can we can choose. I mean, arbitrary, uh, even though it is comparable or not, uh, we can choose. I mean, arbitrary dual path probability. Uh, only concentrate. Only constant. Um, only the the thing is that it should satisfy this normalization condition. As long as uh, this normalization condition is satisfied. Then I mean we can we can define in this way whether it is comparable or not. I mean and this gamma also also should be same. I mean this is just a definition of a dual irreversibility. Okay. I mean it it does not necessarily need to be same as this one. I mean they are they are different one. Okay. I mean, by, by choosing, by choosing uh, a different dual path probability, then uh, we can make a different irreversibility. So th that's all here. Okay, so from, I said okay? <laughs> okay, then we can, we can discuss it later, okay. Okay, so uh, by defining dual irreversibility in, in such a way, so, it, so we can show that this dual irreversibility also satisfies the fluctuation theorem. This is a trivial because, uh, it, I mean, there, this cons, uh, constraint gives a normalization condition. I have a question. Okay. If P star is P, self dual. Yeah. What, what that means? So you mean? R star is always zero, right? R star is always zero. You mean this one is always a zero? P, P star is the same with the P. Ah, uh, ah, uh, this one is same. Yeah, yeah. Ah, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. In that case, actually, it satisfies the fluctuation theorem. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we, you can choose any <coughs> any dual path probability. Okay. Then, then, I mean, yeah, right. So if we choose the same one, then actually R star becomes just one, uh, just a zero. So, because this is just a zero, so it satisfies the fluctuation theorem. An interesting fluctuation theorem. Yeah, not interesting one, but anyway, you can choose the same, same one. Yeah, right. So, you, you can choose anything. I mean, you, you can choose any, any dual path probability. So, it means that 
this, this fluctuation theorem is for uh, fluctuation theorem for entropy production, but by choosing other uh, dual path probability, we can make other fluctuation theorems. So th that's the point. So, w what kind of fluctuation theorem then we can make? But uh, as uh, Professor Chu said, I mean, uh, if we choose very, I mean, trivial case, then we, we will have a trivial fluctuation theorem, then this is not interesting. But if we can choose very um, clever one, then probably we can make a very interesting fluctuation theorem. So how can we choose such a dual, dual process? Okay. So the first example is uh, Jason's key quality. Okay, so let me give you an, a concrete example. This is about the DNA pooling experiment. So here, uh, uh, this is a DNA hairpin, and one end of the hairpin is attached to uh, some wall, and the other end is stick to some Brownian particle here. So the uh, the distance bit, uh, from the wall to this center of the particle is denoted by x. And here we apply uh, um, optical tweezers. So uh, it uh, provides some harmony potential to the Brownian particle. And this center is denoted by lambda t. OK, this is a uh, DNA pooling experiment setup. So because the optical tweezers provide this uh, harmonic potential, then we can uh, write the equation of motion of this particle in this way. OK, then let's provide some protocol. So this protocol, center of the la laser, is given by in this way. So when time is smaller than 1, it is fixed as a lambda 0. And when time is larger than zero, it moves linear in time uh, with a constant speed a. And so uh, for I mean, initial condition, when time equal to zero, so the system is prepared as an equilibrium distribution with an inverse temperature beta. So this is an important condition. It should be started from the equilibrium distribution. So the initial distribution can be written in this way. This is the equilibrium distribution when lambda equal to lambda 0. And here z0 is a partition function. And here f0, I mean, is a uh, free energy. So, and the final distribution of this process uh, is not uh, need, need to be um, uh, equilibrium distribution, but it can be any arbitrary state. It can be any arbitrary non-equilibrium state. So uh, we can write the forward path of probability in this way. So because it started from the initially equilibrium uh, distribution, so we have to put this uh, equilibrium initial distribution here, and this is a conditional path of probability for gamma. But here, I will choose dual probability, path of probability in this way. If we take the time reverse path of probability, then we have to use this final distribution, right? Instead of this equilibrium distribution. But here I will take some different, this is not the time reverse path of probability, but I will choose this kind of a type of a uh, dual path probability. So I use the equilibrium distribution with the final uh, lambda value. OK, so do you have my point? I mean, this is not the time reverse path probability, different path probability, because uh, this is not the final distribution. So if we take this dual path probability, then we can calculate a dual irreversibility and uh, uh, from, the, from these two equilibrium distribution ratio, we can, we can write uh, this potential energy change and this free energy change. And then this heat comes from the ratio between these two conditional path probability. 
Okay, so uh, this is nothing but the energy change because this is the over density system and this is the free energy difference. So it can be written in this way and from the thermodynamic first law, delta E minus Q is, uh, is this is a W work. So uh, the, in this case, it, uh, dual irreversibility becomes work minus free energy difference. This is not the uh, total entropy production, uh, but it also has uh, some different meaning. But it, is, it has uh, some uh, physically meaningful, I mean, quantity. Right? Okay. So, sorry, can you, can you use a microphone? <laughs> sorry, I, can't, I cannot hear you. Yes, my question was, so, this is DNA pooling experiment, yes. so in this case, we cannot, you know, uh, I mean, it is, uh, we can say that is uh, equilibrium because it is an experimental situation, so pooling situation would be changing transition state, not equilibrium state. So I wonder that if we apply this uh, equilibrium protocol uh, for successful uh, application of this protocol, then we should pull the DNA in slow velocity. Okay, okay, I, I understand your point. So, yeah, I mean, my point is that uh, initial time, at time equal to zero, only the, I mean, the, at time equal to zero, the system is prepared as an equilibrium state. Then it, it is possible, right? If we uh, wait for a long time, at, at, at this point, we, with a fixed lambda zero, then we can make an equilibrium distribution in, in, in this system. And then, as you said, we uh, pull, uh, we pull this uh, Brownian particle by using optical tweezers with um, fast, fast speed. Then the, this process actually will be a deviate from the equilibrium distribution, but it, it will be a non-equilibrium situation. So that's why I said that the final distribution does not need to be uh, equilibrium distribution, but it can be any arbitrary state. I mean, it can be any arbitrary non-equilibrium state. So that's all we need. So that's why I uh, mentioned that be because here, if, if it is a time reverse process, we have to use this distribution instead of this equilibrium distribution. Right? Uh, but this is not the time reverse path probability, but this is a dual different path probability. Ju I, just, I, I just take this dual path probability. Uh, that's why I said that we have freedom to choose any, any path probability, so I, I just choose this one. So, you, 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 I mean, this process, I mean, uh, should not be in the quasi-static process. I mean, it can be any arbitrary process. Thank you. Okay. That's very an important point to understand this Jarzynski quality. Okay, so, uh, so do, do you understand this point? Okay, so it means that, so, so if we take this dual path probability, then this dual irreversibility becomes work minus free energy difference. So it means that because this uh, dual path, pro uh, dual uh, irreversibility satisfy the fluctuation theorem, which means that this quantity also satisfy the fluctuation theorem. So now we have this uh, so-called Jarzynski quality. So, um, so even though I start, started from the, some concrete example, but if, the pro, if we, if we um, take this dual path probability in this form, then we can show this Jarzynski equality generally. And the, and the interesting point of this Jarzynski equality is that W, work is non-equilibrium quantity, but free energy is an equilibrium quantity. So this Jarzynski equality make relation between non-equilibrium quantity and equilibrium quantity in this way. So this is an interesting point of this Jarzynski equality. 
So how, how many minutes do I have? Seven. Seven, okay. Thank you. And then the second one is a Crookes relation. Um, okay, let's um, look at the same process as we saw in the Jarzinski equality case. So this is a DNA pooling process. So uh, the initial distribution is prepared as equilibrium distribution with lambda zero. And the process, I mean, process is now the un unfolding process of the uh, DNA. So the final protocol value is lambda one. So as I said, uh, in, in this situation, uh, the system does not need to be equilibrium state. Okay, so in this process one, this is a process one, then uh, we can write dual path probability. It, this is the same for the Jarzinski equality case. So this is a forward path probability. It started from equilibrium distribution, and this is a conditional path probability. And then the protocol changes from lambda zero to lambda one. And this is a dual path probability, and we take instead of a final distribution, we take uh, equilibrium distribution with lambda one. And this is a uh, time reverse conditional path probability. And here, uh, let's, uh, okay, so this one, P1R, is probability for observing uh, this dual irreversibility equals to R. So, uh, from, from this meaning, uh, we can write this probability as uh, in, this, uh, in this way. It means that so this delta function picks uh, some specific gamma trajectory which satisfies this dual, dual irreversibility becomes R. So actually, so this is the meaning of this probability. And now let's consider the second process. I mean, this process and I mean this proce second process is not the time reversal process of process one, but it is different process. So uh, for process two, so it starts from lambda equal to lambda one, and the system is prepared as equilibrium uh, distribution at lambda one, and then now refolding, refolding, so by, by applying this protocol. And protocol is time re reversed way. And then the final protocol becomes lambda zero. So, so uh, even though the, it started from the equilibrium distribution, but the final distribution uh, uh, that does not need, need to be equilibrium distribution. It can be any arbitrary uh, distribution. So in, th in this process too, then dual irreversibility can be written in this way. So this is a time forward path probability. So uh, it starts from equilibrium distribution with lambda one. And this is a, a conditional probability. Uh, the protocol changes from lambda one to lambda zero. And here we take uh, the dual path probability in this way. So instead of using the final distribution, here we use equilibrium distribution with lambda zero. And then the conditional path probability reversed way. So now let's uh, uh, consider this probability. So the meaning of this probability is that probability for observing uh, the dual path probability is equal to minus r for this second process. Then, by definition, we can write this probability in this way. So this delta function picks the specific uh, trajectory gamma, which satisfied uh, this one is same as minus r. Okay, so uh, this is the uh, meaning of this probability. Then, now let's compare. I mean, this one and uh, this one. And you see that 
it has the same equilibrium distribution here and same protocol here. So we can make a relation between these two. So P1 gamma is equal to P2 star gamma star, I uh, gamma tilde. Okay? This one and this one. And let's look at this one again. And this part and this part. And you see that this e uh, equilibrium distributions are same and the protocols are same. So we can make another equation, relation between P1 star and P2. So there are this relation here. So uh, we can make a relation between these two dual <coughs> irreversibility. So this is the definition of uh, R1 star. Okay? And by using this equality, we can change from here to there by using this equality. And then this is actually the minus R2 star gamma tilde. So it means that uh, between these two process one and process two, we can calculate this one and this one separately, but they have this relation. So it means that if we take a gamma tilde, then we have to put this minus sign in front of a, a different dual pass problem, dual irreversibility. So, so by, by using this property, we can change this probability into this one. So by using, um, by using this relation, we can change it from here to there. And then by using this relation, we can change this one into this, this one. And then uh, from, the definition, from the definition of this, from the definition of this, we can change P1 star into uh, this term. Okay, and then from this delta function, actually this value should be R here. So this value should be R, then because <clears throat> this R value is just a constant, so we can take this, this term out of this summation. And then the remaining part is this. And this is nothing but uh, the definition of a P1R. So now we found, find the relation between P1 and P2. So uh, and this means that ratio between these two probability distribution is e equal to E to the R. So this is a Crookes relation. So what, what can we do with this Crookes relation? I mean, uh, okay, so let me first look at the meaning of this Crookes relation. So I even though I started from the specific example, but if it satisfies this condition, actually this condition is mathematically saying that it is involution condition. So it satisfies the involution condition, then we can generally show this Crookes relation. And, and so for total entropy production case, actually it does not satisfy this Crookes relation uh, generally. But uh, for a steady state process, uh, in, in such a case, in such a special case, total entropy production also satisfies the Crookes relation. Okay, so wh what can we do with this Crookes relation? Okay, let's again get back to the, this example. So this is for process one. So as we did, as we evaluate uh, in the example of a Jajinski equality, and uh, this uh, dual irreversibility uh, gives uh, work minus free energy difference. So it means that, so this quantity satisfies the Crookes relation. Uh, but this delta F is just a constant, so it is nothing but the parallel shift. So we can write uh, the, in this way. So it, it, it means that if we um, measure the probability density function of W in the process one, and we measure the minus W uh, distribution in the process two, and their ratio is given by this special factor. Okay, so by using this, we can do some interesting thing. So let's look at the case when this ratio becomes one. In this case, it means that when 
W equal to delta F, then this ratio becomes one, right? So it means that if we say, if we say that this solid curve is a probability density for process one, and if this dashed line is the distribution of process two minus W, and then the, this crossing point, actually at this crossing point, this ratio becomes one. So this crossing point W is actually corresponding to the free, free energy difference between two states. So in such a way, we can um, extract uh, some free energy information uh, by, by measuring the distribution. And uh, these people uh, indeed performed the uh, experiment. So they, they performed on DNA unfolding and refolding uh, experiment. And here, solid curve uh, means that uh, uh, the unfolding process distribution and this dashed line distribution means that refolding process distribution. And this different color codes means different unfolding unfolding speed. So, um, so you can see that for blue curve, they crosses at, at some point, and green curve also uh, crosses at some point, and the red curve also crosses at some point, and you can see that they coincide each other. Right, so uh, this value, this work value, I mean, is equal to the delta F. In, in, in this way, we can determine the free energy difference between uh, two protein states. Okay, so, uh, and so, okay, so time is over now, so I mean, it, it's the right time to stop my lecture today, okay, so thank you.